Hello again and welcome back to Vortex Garage. And on today's video, we're going to break away from some of the other tech videos that we do and update videos, restoration work and all that stuff. And we're going to cover some of the more basic stuff of car maintenance. So maybe you're somebody who is maybe stumbling across our videos or has seen them or watches them with somebody else and you go, you know, I'd really like to learn how to work on my own car. And we've all been in that situation. We've all been in spots, regardless of where we are in the car hobby, where we've had a desire to start working on our own car. And some of us are a little bit further along in that, but some of us haven't quite started. So what if you're in that boat? What if you want to start working on your car, but you just don't know where to start? Well, that's what we're going to start with this video. So we're going to be covering doing an oil change, but rather than just show you the really quick stuff, here's how you pull the drain plug and put an oil in, we're going to cover a lot of the more extreme details about what you're going to need to do it safely and decide whether or not you really want to get into the car hobby in this sense because you, know, you can do some damage to your car if you do things incorrectly and you can do a lot of damage to yourself if you do it incorrectly. So this isn't necessarily a 100% guide but this is just a little video for you to see what it might take to make that leap and to do that we've actually got a visitor here in the Vortex Garage. So this is Kit Stanwood. She is a blogger at kitstanwood.com and Kit, you've got a YouTube channel too as well, right? Yes, I just started a fitness channel. Okay, excellent. So definitely check that out. We'll link it on the video. And Kit, you're here to change your oil, right? Yes. Okay, yes. and you're going to do it? Yes. Okay, have you ever done it before? Um, I've done it once before, so okay. I don't have much experience. Okay, excellent. So I think this is one reason we decided to grab the camera and say, hey, if we're going to do this, let's make a quick video and show some people how to do it. Now, I am going to stop and caution everyone right now. This video is not meant to be a 100% guide on how to do it on every car, every type, every situation. You really have to watch this and decide whether or not you want to you know, go from, make that next step. And there's some key things you're going to want to do. So first of all, you're going to want to make sure that you have all the tools that you need and all the safety equipment. Then you're going to have to make sure that you understand the procedure for doing this on your particular make and model. Because although the procedure of changing oil is very similar, there are some very small idiosyncrasies between models, especially with new cars. Let's take oil filters, for instance. You know, back in the classic days, they actually used a paper cartridge that went in a canister. And then we got into the canister oil filters that we have, and they're hidden all about in the engine bay. Some of them are very easy to get to, some very difficult. And even more modern cars, actually, some of them have gone back to the paper canister. So obviously we're not going to cover all those permutations in one simple video. What you need to do, take your make and model. What I always recommend is get a service manual. There's two ways you can do this. Number one, you can go to eBay or go to your dealer and try to get the service manual. Or you can go to some place like alldatadiy.com, put in your make and model, and for a monthly fee, you can buy a subscription to the service manual for your car. Now if you're only doing oils, they have usually have promo offers. You spend seven, eight bucks, you go, you download the PDFs for the oil change service that you need. There you go, you got your service manual. And you'll see, we're gonna cover some things that are gonna reinforce why you need that. Now, a lot of people tell you, oh, just get under there, turn, you know, crank things loose, figure out where it is and put it all back together. But the key is you wanna do it properly, you wanna do it safely. So we're gonna cover some of the key things that you're gonna need to do this. We've got a few things lined up here. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause, reposition the camera so that you can see in here a little better. And we're gonna show some of the stuff you need to get started safely in changing your own oil. All right. All right, so you're still with us in the video. That means you are actually interested in learning some of the steps to change your oil safely. So that's where we're gonna start is with the safety aspect. Now, what you're gonna to have to do most, unless you've got a really big lifted pickup truck that you can just crawl underneath it, you know, you're gonna to have to lift and support your vehicle somehow. And even if you've got one of those trucks that you can kind of squirrel under and, and not even have to lift it up, if you're anywhere on a hill, you know, there's risk of it rolling when you're under it. So there's a couple key things you're gonna to wanna to do regardless of the situation. Now, obviously here in, in the Vortex garage, we've got a lot of space and we've got some equipment that we could use that maybe not everyone has. So what we're doing here is we're actually putting the car in a spot where we've got our Mountaineer project, we've got the Spitfire restoration. So there's about as much space in here as say you pulled your car into your you know, one bay garage if that's what you have. And you know, I've done plenty of these out in driveways, on gravel, whatever, it can be done. All right, so the first thing you need to do is get the car situated properly and safely where you can work underneath it without having it fall on you. These things weigh anywhere from 3,000, 4,000, even more pounds than that. And uh, you, believe me, there are some horror stories of people getting crushed by these things. 
The first thing you need, well, I was grabbing for something, but that's the second thing you need, but the first thing you need is a really good jack. And you need jack stands. So this is a jack stand right here. So this is, again, like I said, we're trying to make this a beginner video. Let's assume that you really don't know what these tools are. So this is a jack stand, and its job is to actually support the vehicle. The jack's job is to lift the vehicle. The jack is not designed to support the vehicle. That's what jack stands are for. All right, so what these jack stands do is they ratchet, and then they lock in place. So depending on how high the car is, you put these under the correct support area, and then you're able to, to lift them. Now, one thing I'm gonna caution you, anyone who's worked with these before knows, when you go to take these out when you're done, you always grab them like this, and then you grab this by accident. And then that causes, and pull your ears, that to drop down. And the worst thing in the world, some of the worst pain you can ever endure, is when that little spot right here on your hand gets caught right there. And I've had that hurt for like a good half hour after doing it. So, all right, anyway. These are jack stands, you need two of these. So we've got a pair, we got one down here. Never do it with just one, you want a pair, you want to do this properly. If you're working on gravel, you may need to get a piece of wood that sits underneath them, something strong, because you don't want these digging into the mud if it had just rained or something like that. So you want proper support. You want these to be nice and level. So jack stands, these are for protecting the car when it's up there. Now the jack on the other hand, again, this is for lifting the car. Now this is a fairly nice jack, obviously. This has got a flip pump on it and it raises really quickly. And to lower it, you just twist it to release it. Nice and simple. So this will lift the car up really easily and then use the jack stands to support it. Now the thing that I want to caution you on is there's a lot of deals that you can get. You go to the auto parts store and they go, hey, we got a, a special. You get a jack and two jack stands for 25 bucks, $29. You see those all the time and that sounds great. But when you end up getting, and I don't have one here because the last one that I had was such a piece of garbage, I threw it away. You get a dinky little two-ton jack stand that is one of the scariest things I've ever seen, and you get a dinky pair of two-ton jack stands. Now, when you're actually lifting the car, you have, that's where the service manual comes into play, because you don't just want to shove this jack under something and start lifting it. You don't want to lift with the motor. You don't want to lift with the side of the car. You can. I've literally seen people put the jack on the floorboard of their car, lift it up, and cave it in. They end up with a big dent right where their foot goes, whatever. And then I, what you need to do, that service manual, and sometimes even your owner's manual, will show you where the factory lift points are. Now, they'll show you for using a two post or four post lift kind of deal, but they'll also show you where the jack should go. A lot of the service manuals go further. They show you this is where you should jack the car up, and this is where you place your jack stand. Look that up. Again, that's different for every make and model. We'll cover it a little bit when we lift this one, but that's what you need to know. So that's the big thing, lift safely. Oh, one more thing. You're only lifting the front of the car. So that means if you have a front wheel drive car and you have it in park, only the front wheels are being held. The minute you lift those wheels off the ground, the rear wheels could roll. Now you might think, okay, I'll just put my handbrake on and that'll lock them. Well, you can't trust your handbrake. So you need a pair of these. These are wheel chocks. What these do is they actually dig into the ground you put them behind the wheel so that this wheel butts up against it. That stops the car from rolling back. The last thing you want to do is be under, you got your jack stands, you got your, you lifted with your nice jack, you got your jack stands positioned perfectly. You feel you're all safe and then the car rolls back while you're underneath it and it falls off the jack stands. These are critical. Now, there's a couple different ones you can buy. Like anything else, there's cheap ones and there's more expensive ones. These are about 10 bucks a pop. They also sell ones that are two bucks a pop. And I think I even have a pair of those. I use them for emergencies, keep them in the car for the trailer. But the cheap ones are just molded plastic. They slide really easily. I don't really feel that they hold very well. You want the big, heavy ones. These will protect you. So get a pair of those. All right, so what else are you gonna need tool-wise? Well, we're not done with safety because that's what we wanna show. This is your first time doing it. First of all, you're gonna need some shop rags. All right, so that's cleanliness, obviousness, but safety as well. You're gonna need some gloves. All right, if you're taking oil out of your car and the engine's still warm, that oil could be very hot. You could scald yourself, you could burn yourself, you want some gloves. You really don't want to get that stuff on you anyway because in the long run, it's not really good to soak up that stuff in your skin. You want eye protection, okay? I know everyone says it, no one wears it, but let me tell you, I can tell you some stories about wanting to wear these. These are cheap ones. These are literally like from Harbor Freight, they're 99 cents, and they'll probably get the job done for most people and for doing oil changes. They'll protect you from getting splatter in the eye. 
uh, from the oil. You get a drop of oil, hot oil in your eye, that's gonna burn. You know, you might end up going to urgent care. Um, I once wore these while doing a little bit of grinding and I had a little piece hit me right here. Didn't go in the eye, but it was enough. It was, I called it a wake up call. And I went and got my better goggles and put them on. And that's these ones right here. So these are, these actually protect you more because they kind of cover around your eyes and they fit over my glasses pretty well. So if you wear glasses, believe me, I know the pains of wearing uh, safety goggles. But these will actually adjust really well and protect your eyes. Do you need these for an oil change? I mean, probably not. But I would recommend you really got to use some sort of an eye protection. Uh, but when you're doing more work, invest in some really good ones. So if you don't have something, go get the nice stuff. Because the last thing you want to do is go try to save money by working on your car and end up with some sort of medical bills because you got some crap in your eye. All right. We're finally done with safety, I swear. All right, so now we get to move on to the tools. All right, so you're doing an oil change and a filter change. So assuming you have the cartridge filters, let's start with the filter. You're going to want a filter removal tool. So I've got this one right here. And actually, kid, if you wouldn't mind, reach in the uh, toolbox there, the uh, bottom, see where it says task force. Open that one up, and you see right on the left there this? Yeah, grab one of these. So this right here is what a lot of people end up buying, and I've got a couple of them. People have brought them over and left them. These caps go on the, top, on the end of the oil filter, and you buy a specific one to match your oil filter. And it goes on there, and it's kind of got like a hex fitting, and you put a ratchet on it and spin it off. I hate these things, okay? I really don't like them. Um, they work most of the time, but they often don't work, and there's a really good reason for it. Not every oil filter has this hex pattern. Motorcraft filters, for instance, use kind of a knurled edge. Uh, some filters use a smoother edge or less um, hex, I guess you could say. I don't know if there's a proper way to say that. So th these can be problematic, and I've had these go on and slip on a really tight oil filter. So I, and, and the other problem is, is if you have more than one car and the filters, you've got to buy one of these for every car that you have. So these things, in the long run, not really a big fan. This one right here is the only oil filter, like removal tool that I've bought that I like and have kept. I've had the strap ones, I've had the chain ones, I've had those, I've had all the other kinds they make and they're all junk. This is the one you want. All right, what this thing does is you put your ratchet on it. Right, you're gonna need one of these, you're gonna need a ratchet handle, so you gotta have some basic tools. This takes a 3 8 ratchet, and the nice thing about it is, as you're actually taking the, the thing off, it compresses. So the, the harder you pull on a stuck oil filter, the tighter this grips, and it's got some knurled edges there, which might be a little hard to see on camera. But this will actually dig into the casing of that oil filter and get it off. I've never not had this tool remove an oil filter, unless maybe it was some super weird spot to get it in. As long as you can get it on a ratchet and get it in there, this is the tool you want. So we'll dig one up on Amazon and we'll go ahead and link it, um, but most auto parts stores carry these as well. All right, so that's what you need to get your filter. Of course, you're gonna to need to go out and buy your filter. And then you're gonna to need to buy your oil. Okay, so we got our oil here. Now that's where you gotta to go to your, to your owner's manual. You gotta find out what kind of oil you need. There's a lot of different kinds out there. All right, so this is 5W30. This is the weight of the oil, the 30. There's 40, there's 20 weight oil, there's even 50 weight oil. There's some where they don't have multi-viscosity, the 5W, they might just be SAE30 or something like that. So there's a lot to choose from, so it's very easy to get the wrong stuff. A lot of modern cars, 5W30, pretty good, uh, will work for them. A lot of other cars, the, the other ones you'll see is 5W20s. A lot of Fords, Hondas like to use the 20 weight oil. I can't tell you which one to get. I can tell you, go to your owner's manual, it will tell you right there. Another hint, look at your oil cap. A lot of times the actual oil fill cap will tell you the precise weight of oil that you need. All right, so you got your oil. Go to your owner's manual, look up capacities. It'll tell you how much oil you need. With a filter change in this car that we're gonna do, it requires six quarts. So we got a five quart jug and then a single one quart bottle. Made sure that we match the viscosity as well. All right, what else we got here? Um, obviously, you're gonna need some sockets. We've got our sockets in here, so you can just get a regular socket set. If you, you know, know what size socket you need for the drain plug, you can get it beforehand. You can also use wrenches if you want, just a box end wrench, but I would tell you to get a socket set because, uh, you know, if, if you're using this as your gateway drug to work on cars, you might as well get the tools. You might need a shop light. Maybe you're under there and it's dark, so there's all kinds of ones out there. This one's kind of nice, I like it. Those different things, you can twist it around. 
it's got a magnetic mount. So it's made by Snap-on. This is a real nice one. And yeah, you might think Snap-on super expensive, but I just picked this up at the local tractor supply. And uh, well, as you can hear, it's, it's a little cheap, but it gets the job done. Another weird thing you might need. I told you this was going to be a detailed video. All right, these are crush gaskets. This is specifically for a Honda. We're not doing a Honda today. But Hondas like to use these crush gaskets and the oil drain plug. Little tiny washer looking thing. And you might look at this and say, well, I took it off and it looked fine on the old one. I don't need it. What these are designed to do is they actually smush or crush. That's why they're called crush gaskets. As you tighten that drain plug to specifications, which again is why you want your service manual because you're torquing it to spec, this will actually compress and seal. If you reuse this part, you're going to get little drips here and there, and that's why people complain, oh, I, I, every, I seem to be dripping oil every now and then. Well, that's because you didn't replace your crush gasket. You get a bag of these. I think I got, how many were in here? bag of 50. Maybe so. Yeah, no mind. All right, so get one of these. Last the life of the car. Cost like three or four bucks. Make sure you get that if you need it. Not every car uses these, but again, this is one of those weird things, depending on what make or model you have, you may need it. All right, what else we got? I think we kind of covered everything. So we got our tools, we got our safety equipment. Ah, oh, big thing. You're gonna need a drain pan. You can't just drain this stuff out onto the floor. So you're gonna need a drain pan. Get the biggest one you can get because that way you're gonna limit the amount of spills. Get one with a nice spout because you're gonna hopefully, when you empty this out, I mean, you're obviously gonna have to put it in something, but hopefully you can fit it in, in your old container. And, uh, and then you can take it off to be recycled and disposed of properly. Don't be pouring this stuff out in the ground. It seeps into the groundwater and it doesn't take a lot of oil to, to taint the groundwater. So unless you want to be drinking this stuff, take and get it recycled. It's not hard. The auto parts store that you bought the oil at, they'll take it. They take it for free. Most gas stations will take it for free. Look up in your municipality, the local landfill, they usually have days. I've never been charged to get rid of waste oil. You want Two filters, these are a little dirty, I'm going to clean them up before we use them. You want a nice clean one that you keep separate for the fresh oil. And you want an older one that you don't mind if it gets a little dirty because when you drain this out into your container, you need a funnel to get the old oil into that. So two funnels, one drain pan. All right, so hopefully you're still with us. I know if you're kind of like, man, all I wanted to do is change my oil and they only charged me 30 bucks at the, at the Walmart to do it. Well, that's where you have to make that decision. Do you want to do it? Do you want to take ownership of doing this? You are going to have to invest in a few parts and, and tools. This stuff isn't really that expensive. But if you're looking to get into stuff and maybe do a few other things on your car, these tools are an investment. You can use them on more than one. They will pay for themselves in the long run. All right, so Kit, did you have any questions on this? I didn't let you talk at all during that whole time as I rambled on about tools and safety. One thing I wanted to add was my oil changes are actually $70, so I'm saving $40 to change my own oil, which is nice. Excellent. So. <laughs> Nice. Uh, you got to raise a good point there. I mean, one of the key things is that we're using synthetic oil. A lot of people go, oh, I go to Jiffy Lube or I go to Walmart and they only charge me $29.95 or $19.95. Mm -hmm. Well, they're using the low-grade conventional oil that really only lasts about three to 4,000 miles at best. With this synthetic, this will sometimes last, you know, easily 7,500, sometimes 10,000 miles. I usually put about 4,500 to 5, I like to change them. Again, you got to look in your manual to see when the oils do, but synthetic gives you that breathing room and it's just better in the long run. So, And this stuff costs more. So the minute you go to Walmart and say, oh, I want synthetic oil, well, then they're going to say, well, you can have the Walmart synthetic, which is the, their brand. And you go, okay, no, I want Mobile One. Well, they're going to charge you the money for that plus the labor. You're up to you know, $60, $70. You do it at a dealer. I've seen oil changes on some cars come and crest the $100 mark. So if you're able to do it yourself, you save money in the long run, these tools will pay for themselves. But don't skimp on the quality, especially the safety stuff. It just scares me that people get under their cars on these $20 jacks and jack stands and, and you know, look, they're probably perfectly safe, but you, do you really want to take the chance and have that fall on you? There, there's no one lifting that off you when the jack fails. And again, that's the point. I'm going to stress it again. I'm going to say it a lot today. Use the jack to lift, not to support. Right. And also get someone experience if it's your first or second time doing it as well. You know, that's a really good point. <laughs> I meant to say that too in the video, is that, you know, as we go through this, um, if you've never, ever done this before, if you don't have any experience on cars, or maybe you watch someone do it, you know, you're taking a risk doing this by yourself. You could find that you, I uh, here's some things that could happen. I did this one time on a car um, when I was young, and I was doing oil changes for my parents. I stripped the oil drain plug on their truck. 
because I put it in like a goofball and I was, I went, oh, it's just tight. And I, I cranked on, stripping it means all the threads on it come off and it'll never tighten, which meant I couldn't put the plug back in, which means the oil would have all drained out. I had to get like a tool to redo the threads and like put a new plug in. I, had, I learned a lot, but man, oh man, did I feel like crap the entire day. And I was really concerned that how do you, you have to put an oil pan on. You'd have to take the engine out or lift it up or take some of the parts out. You never know, depending on the car, what it would take to do that. So it doesn't take much to mess stuff up, but at the same time, it's very feasible to do it. Don't look, that's why we don't want you to look at this video as, hey, I watched this, I can definitely do this. Now you should watch this video and decide if this is for you. And Kit is exactly right. If you've never done it, find someone who's done it before, have them help you out. Use this as a guide, but use them and their expertise and learn. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it, so. Yep. All right, good deal. All right, if people are not totally bored with the stocking, I think we're actually gonna start changing oil now. So first things first, we've gotta get this car jacked up and uh, yep. put some jack stands under it. So I think before we do anything though, I'm gonna put those uh, wheel chocks in the back. So. Absolutely, these are super important, don't forget. All right. <laughs> okay, so this is a wheel chuck and you'll use this so that your car doesn't roll back when it's lifted up. So I'm gonna put it behind the back wheels, both of them and then I'm gonna kick it in a little bit just to make sure that it's secure. All right, so real briefly before we get started, um, we already jacked the car up and we didn't really show that on the video. And one of the reasons for that is we talked earlier when I rambled on for a long, long time with hopefully some good stuff, was that every car is a little different. So I didn't really wanna show how to specifically jack this car up because you can't really apply that to every car. I mean, there are some basics and general rules of thumb but I kind of think that that's actually its own video. So the car is jacked up and it's up on jack stands. We will show you kind of how we did it. So let me grab this camera and I'll just show you how we have them positioned. All right, so you can kind of see here, we've got our two jack stands. And they are, um, a lot of cars have these, unibody cars have these kind of frame rails and they have a nice junction point here where they're very strong. So I like to put the jack stands here for a couple of reasons. One of course is the strength and number two, the way the cup on the jack stand is kind of rides the spring rail pretty good. So, you know, this would look kind of tempting to do. You need to look in the manual and see where it is. Some people go the way they, uh, they call it the pinch weld, where a lot of the stuff comes together. You have this area here, and a lot of uh, the OEM jacks have a little slot that rides this spot specifically here. Again, it depends on what it says in the manual. Some of them do that, some of them don't. Some cars perfectly find the lift on the pinch weld. Some cars absolutely not okay. So you really gotta look. That's why I didn't want to show you one specific way. Go take the make and model of your car, go to the service manual, find those lift points, it'll tell you exactly where things should go. All right, now, it's about time to change some oil. So what I've done here is pop the hood by pushing a button that's near the steering wheel in my car. It might be different where your car is. And another thing that might be different in your car is where you can pop the hood underneath here. There's a latch in the middle put your hand down. So the first thing we want to find underneath the hood is the dipstick and then also the oil cap. You know, something interesting with that oil cap is you want to do this actually before you take the oil out, you want to make sure you can actually open that because that's where you're going to fill the new oil. So make sure you can remove it. There you go. And the reason I say that, I actually had a car one time I went to put the oil in it and the cap broke in half and the bottom piece was still stuck in there and it actually took me a little while to get it pulled out. Had I not changed the oil, I could have not worried about it, ordered one, just gone driving, whatever. All right, so you're, you're right, you got your dipstick, you got your oil fill. Um, what about underneath here? What if you had just been driving, you know, you just pulled right. in, you just went for a big drive? It's gonna be really hot. Okay. So you're gonna wanna let it cool off a little bit before you start doing any work so you don't burn yourself. Okay, and some specific items in general. This right here is um, one of the catalytic converters and this is one of the exhaust uh, manifolds. So this piece right here in general is gonna be really hot. This is actually an oxygen sensor. We're not gonna cover that stuff today, but this is one of the main heat generators. Obviously the entire engine itself can be hot. So you really wanna be careful around any of this stuff. You'll feel the heat emanating off of it. Um, one thing that's really interesting, I'm spotting it right now. Let's, let's see, Kate, if you can spot it. Where's your oil filter? Right there. Down. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So I actually highly recommend before you drain your oil, again, 
you want to make sure you can open this to put your your new oil in. And if you're going to do your filter, you want to make sure that you can find it and it's somewhere that you can locate it and actually get to it and you feel comfortable proceeding. Everything about this is if you've never done this on, on your car before, you really want to go through the steps and make sure that you're comfortable moving ahead. Right. So you see it, it's in a nice accessible spot. Thank you, thank you, Buick. And uh, you're able to remove your, your oil fill plug. So I think we're all set. So we need to gather some tools up and get underneath and go ahead and drain the oil. So this blanket is a really good idea to keep yourself from getting dirty. I put it underneath where we're going to lay down. Here are your safety goggles. I've got my safety goggles. So we can look awesome from this point forward. So, alright, and I'm going to give you a shop rag. Grab the tools I need. So we're going to use a ratchet. You can use this one. That's a nice swivel head gear wrench. And I don't know what size, and nor do I remember what size the oil drain plug is, so we're going to need an assortment of sockets. So I'm going to do a 13, a 15, I can't count, 15, and a 17, because generally I've found those are the sizes they are. I'm just going to grab these. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a 10 16 and a 5 8. So I've got five of them here, and let me tell you, the chances that any of these five are going to fit are absolutely zero, because uh, once again, it's Murphy's Law. I know I have to come back to this toolbox to get the right one, so I'm just making it quicker by grabbing a bunch of them, so I only have to do it once. So I guess I could take all of them, but what's the fun in that? All right, so where to? Next, we got to drain the oil. Okay, uh, look, we're forgetting something very important right now. Yep. Got to grab our drain pan. Okay, so when you're here with Kit, you've got your drain pan, I see. And uh, so now you've got the task of locating your, your oil drain plug. So there's a lot of things under here. If you're not familiar with what they are, you're kind of wondering what's what under here. Well, you remember your engine was up top, and luckily everything's cold. This is an exhaust pipe here, so if your engine was hot, this would be burning hot. This is actually your, your oil pan, okay? So that's a good start. You want to look for this case here. Now, being a front-wheel drive car, if there, there could be a second one of these, sometimes smaller, that would be for the transmission. You wouldn't want to remove the transmission drain plug. That would not work, obviously, and uh, then you'd have to figure that out. So what you want to do is just kind of look above where your engine is, get an idea of where everything's situated, so when you come underneath, you can make sure that you're looking at the actual um, oil pan. So this is, a, this is a cast aluminum oil pan. Some of them, they look a little different. Uh, that's why, again, every car is going to be slightly different. You know what? That service manual, it's going to show you exactly where you need to take something off. So that's why we don't want this video something where you're playing chance. Grab that service manual, show you exactly where to get. So do you know where your drain plug is? Right here. Nice. Excellent. Okay, so you don't need your socket just yet. What you're going to want to do, here's what these five sockets I got. You don't need your ratchet right yet. So there's those five sockets. You're going to take each one of those and you're going to put the hex side and see if it fits. And when I say fits, I mean it's going to be tight so you'll be able to get it on there, but it's not going to have like movement side to side. If you kind of were able to do this, it means it's too loose. Not that one. Not that one. So it's not a 13. This? A little loose. A little yep. loose? Oh, what's that one? And that was a 17. So maybe the 15? Let's try it. Yep. All right. That one. Look at that. We don't even have to go back to the toolbox. Okay. All right. So you take that and go ahead and put it on your ratchet. There you go. All right. And see how when it let loose there, all of a sudden your arm shot back? Yep. That's why you want to be careful. All right, now, before you go too much further, it'll actually start to seep oil out within the first couple turns. Yep. So go ahead and reposition yourself so you can move the drain pan in a good spot. And once it gets really loose, you really don't even need the ratchet on a lot of them. You can actually take that off and just use your hand, and it's called finger tight, and you can just twist it off. And if it's not, yep, oh, there it goes. I'll put the drain pan. The oil will be a little hot. There it goes. You have the good instinct too. I, I do this a lot by instinct, so I, I grab stuff, but as soon as that goes, I always like to check and make sure that pan's good. And one thing I, you probably remember is you see how the oil's coming out and it's sort of 
going about six inches further than where the drain plug is. Right. That's because it's under under pressure. It's got some pressure behind it. As you get lower, it's actually going to not flow as much, and it's going to come straight. So the position where the oil lands in the pan is going to move. Mm -hmm. And there have been many times where I, I started it going, and then I get out of the car to do something, and I come back. It had moved, and it was pouring all over the floor. So the key thing is make sure that drain pan is going to cover you regardless of where that's flowing from. So... Deal. Now we just wait. Yep. So now that all the oil has drained out, um, I'm going to put the screw back in by hand. And it's important to do it by hand at first so that the screws line up correctly. Okay, perfect. So what Kit's doing, she's kind of putting it in by hand, as she said, to make sure. And the, the term that we use is called cross threading. If you were to cross thread it, you actually end up ruining the threads on the nut or the and the bolt and all that and and that can really damage them. So the key is you watch her, she just spun it in by hand. It went nice and easy. If if you'd felt any resistance there, you want to double check things because that means you can damage it. So here you go. There's your torque wrench. You're gonna use this torque wrench to tighten it in. Um, each car has its own torque that it has to be turned to. And once you get it in there correctly, it should make a little click. And then I heard it. Yep, so I'll do it one more time just to check. I always like to do two clicks. Make sure, and don't push it past the click, but you'll feel it. So, and that puts it at the, there you go. Okay, perfect. And that puts it at the value that the manufacturer recommends. And now your oil drain plug is back in. So, excellent job. And uh, we're almost ready to put oil in it, but we do have to get the filter off. So, we're going to take the oil filter off before we do that. So, we can... I guess regroup back up at the top of the car. Yes. All right, so before Kit gets started um, taking the oil filter off, she's got the oil filter wrench on the socket there. But real quick before we get started, it's a little hard to see under there. But we actually moved the drain pan, and since it's a nice wide one, we gave it a good wide area, because when we take that off, there's going to be oil dripping out. We don't want to drip it on the floor. So make sure the drain pan is in place. It's actually off a little bit, so I'm going to climb under and move it, get it nice and... and You're going to want to hold it. I can help hold it. And you're going to want to start ratcheting it and it'll sort of tighten like that. Okay, there you go. All right, and now it's, it's loose. So once it's loose, you can do it by hand. And generally the first time you do your oil for yourself, it's going to be the tightest. Uh, since you had done this before, it was actually on with the proper amount of tightening. So and you can hear the oil dripping out. You can see it on the filter as well. And just be real careful when it get. make sure you grab onto it. When it gets to the end of the threads, they have a tendency to pop off and then fall into the oil and splash oil. So you'll sort of feel as it comes loose, perfect. And then tilt it down, drain it out. There you go. And then go ahead and lift it up. And this is one of these cases where you want to, if this had been hot exhaust, you wouldn't have been wanting to do that job. So for this new one, to make it seal better, I've added some oil with my finger around the outside of it. Okay. Another thing you're going to want to do when you take the old one off, these rubber gaskets, very often they come off and they're fine, but you want to just double check on the mating surface there. You can kind of see it down there. Make sure that the old rubber seal isn't on there, because if it is, you'll basically stack them and it'll blow one of them out and cause a massive oil leak. So you look pretty good there. So. Try to get the camera. So I almost have this on, and when you almost have it on and it feels tight, you want to go an extra half turn. So we're finally at one of the final stages of putting the oil in. Um, there's a few things I want to mention here. We've used a clean filter. Um, and another thing I want to mention also, when you take off the cap, you're going to see that there is this um, silver film on top. It's going to be really important not to drop that into the oil. So I'm going to take a utility knife 
and I'm going to cut around the outside of it and carefully wrap it. Then since this oil filter or this filter is a little small, I'm gonna make sure to pour it really slowly. And as we mentioned before, once this is empty, you can put the old oil inside of it and bring it to your local gas station or where you pick this up at. And get every last drop. It hurts it. See, there was quite a bit left in there. Throughout, I want to be careful to not drip any oil, so I'm going to take a rag and dry it off on the bottom. Another important thing to make sure that you do is to remember to remove all of your tools that's underneath the hood. We're going to put the cap back on and grab this. Then we're going to run the car a little bit and check the dipstick. Okay, and one of the reasons we're actually going to run the car prior to checking the oil is that one thing I, we didn't really cover when putting the filter in is that a lot of people like to fill the filters up with oil before you put it in. That cuts down the time that it has to pump to fill up into the filter. But as you can see, this one's very um, kind of horizontal. So if we were to fill that up and try to put it on, it's all going to leak out as we're putting it in. So this one isn't a setup where you can do that. So that means that filter's kind of got some empty space in it. So as you run the car and that oil comes up to pressure, it's going to fill up that oil filter and you're going to get a more accurate reading when you check your dipstick. You don't check it while it's running, of course, but you just do that enough so that way once you stop the car again and you actually check the oil, it'll be a nice accurate reading. And Kit, of course, will cover how to do that in just a second. Cover that. So. All right, so as we get to that, what we're going to do next, we're going to go ahead and just get the car off the jack stands in the jack. Now, the same safety applies. You got those wheel chocks in the back. You know, be careful with your lifting and uh, pull the jack stands out, you know, get the car back on the ground. Again, that's a whole other video of, of terms of lifting a car up, but, um, you know, you want to find for your specific make and model what to do. Uh, very important when you do that, don't forget those wheel chocks in the back. Many, many times I've taken a car off a of jack stands, put it in reverse and tried to go somewhere just to run into those things. And eh, the worst that happens is you get out and you got you to gotta take them out. But all right, so we're going to get this car back on the ground. All right, so we're going to take the used oil out of this drain pan and we're going to use this uh, container from our new oil to fill up. A couple things you're going to want to know. First off, I don't know if I'd really recommend this oil drain pan because it is very, the spout on it's not really well defined. I spill a lot when I'm doing this. So we've got some oil dry that we can use if we do spill. I've gotten fairly good at it, so I'll try on camera to not spill any, which means I'm gonna pour it everywhere. All right, second thing, you got your container here. Well, this is a six quart fill, uh, fill. This is a five quart container. So obviously six quarts of oil ain't gonna fit in here. Now every car burns just a little bit of oil in its oil change life, so hopefully, um, it obviously, well, hopefully it doesn't burn too much, but more than likely there's been enough oil burn off that we'll probably be able to fit this in here, but if we need to, we'll, we'll use our, our one quart. Um, so it, it varies, but just know that you're probably going to have to use that one quart if you can't fit everything in here. Well, that's where things get a little scary because I've done it before. You fill them up and you think you're good just to find out that you end up, your funnel fills up with oil and it has nowhere to go. It starts leaking out the side. And then the only thing you can do is really quickly pull the funnel out and put it back in the pan. It makes a huge mess. I've been there. So you want to watch as you're filling this. Luckily, these Mobile One containers have a little clear strip right here. So I like to position it so I can see that and I can see the oil level rising. When it starts getting up to here, you're running out of room. All right, so just bear that in mind. Now the second thing is this funnel. 
as it's in here and as it gets pressed down, there's no air release. So this actually starts to make a seal with the cap here. So if you pour this in really quickly and fill it up, it's gonna bubble. It's gonna, as the air needs to get displaced inside, it'll bubble and it'll splash oil out. So you wanna go slow, make sure you leave some room for the air to go, and that you don't spill, and that you're keeping an eye on that. So who knew something as simple as filling a container with used oil is something that I could talk about for three minutes. But let's go for it. All right, so. I didn't really spill much. That's pretty amazing. So I'm pretty psyched about that. So I'm gonna grab a rag here and uh, just like Kit did when she took the, the funnel off the car there, it's gonna drip a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of clean it off, put it over here, cap this off, and this oil is ready to go to the recycling center and be properly disposed of. So, before I run the car, I'm gonna check the oil. Uh, I'm gonna take out the dipstick right here. All right, so we see that there's oil on it. I'm gonna check it again after we run the car. I have taken the, um, the wheel chucks out from underneath of them on both sides of the car, and I've checked to make sure that all the tools have been removed from underneath the hood too. Now I'm gonna go start the car for about 30 seconds or so just enough to fill that oil filter up. So while I run this, I'm gonna make sure that everything looks okay on the dashboard. Um, the oil light has turned off and all the gauges look, look great. The only message that I'm getting is that the hood is open and I already know that. So we are good to go. All right, so now that I've run the car for about 30 seconds, I have a clean rag that I'm going to clean the dipstick with um, just so we can get an accurate reading. Sometimes when you run the car, it can splash up oil. I'm gonna put it back in, bring it back out. I'm gonna check where it's lined up. Sometimes it's clear, so it's a little hard to read, but you can see on this dipstick that it's in between the hash marks on the higher side. So we're good to go. And that concludes us with changing oil. So that concludes our video of changing oil. I hope you guys really enjoyed learning the basics of changing oil on a vehicle. This was Buick, but yours might be a little different, so don't forget to reference your manual. Thanks, Kit. And uh, you did a great job getting your oil changed there. And Spot on, I agree with you. Remember those service manuals. If you watch Vortex Garage, you've seen us talk about those a lot. And be safe when you're under a car. You got something big and heavy over top of you. If you're gonna do this, make sure that you're safe. And like Kit said, look up a car you have, make sure you're comfortable doing it. This isn't a guide on how to change every oil. This is something hopefully gets you excited if you're into it like Kit here. And Kit did a great job changing oil, so. And don't forget to follow me on my blog, kitstanwood.com, and connect with me on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And definitely if you're here, we appreciate you watching and as always, subscribe to Vortex Garage. We'll keep the videos coming. If you enjoyed this, we've got plenty more stuff you might find interesting. All right, 